What is up, everybody? So there's been a lot going on recently in Stephen Avery's case. I'm going to do a little recap, and then we will jump into today's video, which is another response Kathleen Zellner filed yesterday on March 22nd, 2024. I know I just did a recap a couple of videos ago, but we're getting a lot of new people to the channel asking questions, so I want to make sure everybody is up to date. Now, there's a lot going on, and it kind of gets confusing. Let's see if I get this right. At the start of this year, Kathleen Zellner filed a motion on behalf of Stephen Avery. The court said it was too long, so she cut something like 12 pages off of it, resubmitted, and then it was accepted. The court then asked for an extension in order to respond to that motion from Kathleen Zellner. Kathleen Zellner then filed, I believe this is the correct order, Kathleen Zellner then filed Another motion asking for scientific testing to be done, specifically on the RAV4. She wanted to get DNA testing done on the RAV4, something they hadn't done before. And after that, she filed another filing, another motion asking to stay the appeal, which was the first thing she filed back in January. Then the court responded to that on March 21st, saying they oppose the stay of appeal. I did a video on that yesterday. I will link it in the description below. And now Kathleen Zellner has responded to the state's response of her response of asking for the stay of appeal, of them opposing the stay of appeal. Or, and also opposing the scientific DNA testing, maybe? I'm not sure. Kathleen Zellner put out a tweet saying they are opposing the scientific, the scientific DNA testing as well. I will link all of the videos in the description in the order that I made them so you can get up to date if you're interested in everything that's been going on. We went from absolutely nothing going on to a lot going on real quick. So, yesterday, March 22nd, 2024, Kathleen Zellner filed another response to the state. Let's go over it. State of Wisconsin, Court of Appeals, District 2. Mr. Avery's reply to the state's response in opposition to Stephen Avery's motion to stay appeal pending disposition of Mr. Avery's amended second motion for post-conviction post scientific testing. Whoo! That's a lot. The defendant, Stephen A. Avery, by his undersigned attorneys Kathleen Zellner and Stephen Richards, replies to the state's motion in opposition to Stephen Avery's motion. Now, I'm not going to go over all the Wisconsin statutes that they go over because there's a lot of numbers and it gets very confusing. For example, Wisconsin statute 808.705 in brackets 5 and there's another one 808.75 in brackets 6. I'm just reading the motion. I'm just reading this with oat involving all of those numbers because it gets very confusing. If you want to go read it, give it a Google if you want to know what all those numbers are. To stay his appeal pending disposition of Stephen Avery's amended second motion for post-conviction scientific testing by the circuit court as follows. The decision to remand is left to this circuit court's discretion. Stephen Avery has filed several motions to supplement and remand with the appellate court. The state blames Stephen Avery for the previous motions to supplement and remand, but the record illustrates that Stephen Avery's motions to supplement and remand were the result of the state withholding evidence from Stephen Avery's counsel. In 2017, Stephen Avery filed its first appeal from the Circuit Court's 2017 and November 2017 orders denying his June 2017 motion. In, two th in May 2018, Stephen Avery moved this court directly to supplement the record on appeal with a CD disclosed to defendant for the first time on April 17, 2018. This court remanded the case to enable Stephen Avery to file an appropriate supplemental post-conviction motion with the circuit court within 30 days of the date of this order. In January 2019, Stephen Avery again moved to this court to directly stay the appeal and remand for the circuit court's consideration 
of specific claims related to the state's release of the to the Hallbach family of suspected bone fragments. Again, Stephen Avery demonstrated that his prior counsel has not been informed by the state of the release of the bones to the Hallbach family. Again, this court granted Stephen Avery's remand motion. The court, uh, the current appeal pending before this court concerns an alleged Brady violation that Stephen Avery brought to this court's attention on April 12, 2021, with a motion to stay his appeal and remand for evaluation of this claim. Specifically, the claim involves an affidavit of Thomas Sawinski, a Manitowoc motor route driver, who attests that while on his paper route in the early morning hours of Hallbach's disappearance, he spotted a shirtless Bobby Dassey and an older man pushing... Teresa Hallbach's RAV4 vehicle down Avery Road towards the junkyard. Thomas Sawinski further attests that after delivering the paper, Bobby Dassey attempted to block his exit and thus caused him to swerve into a shallow ditch. Thomas Sawinski claimed to have called the sheriff's office to report what he had seen, but he was told the sheriff's office already knew who did it. The court decided to deny the motion to remand because it already decided the legal and factual basis for the other claims raised. The court concluded that this new claim raised a distinct issue that the circuit court should resolve on a standalone basis through a new Wisconsin statute motion. Although the, the circuit court did deny Stephen Avery's request for an evidentiary hearing on August 22, 2023, it did find that the Thomas Sawinski affidavit was discovered by the council after the defendant's conviction, saying the first requirement of the Edmonds test. The circuit court also found that the defendant was not negligent in seeking out the Thomas Sawinski evidence and therefore had satisfied the second prong of Edmonds. This court has expressed the desire to include all possible issues in order to avo avoid multiple appeals because this court allowed for Stephen Avery's prior request for remands this court has decided one appeal on July 28th, 2021, which contained multiple issues. Stephen Avery agrees with the state that the narrow issue before this court on Stephen Avery's current appeal is whether Stephen Avery is entitled to an evidentiary hearing. However, the circuit court determined that Bobby Dassey's possession of Teresa Hallbach's vehicle after her disappearance was immaterial and could be because Bobby was trying to hide the evidence evidence to protect two individuals directly linked by forensic evidence to the murder and convicted of this crime. There is no zero, 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 this many, zero forensic evidence linking Brendan Dassey to this crime. The circuit court's explanation is factually incorrect. Here we go. Brendan Dassey was never linked. How does someone involved in this case write something stating that there was forensic evidence linking Brendan Dassey to this? Somebody does not know anything about what they are supposed to know a lot about. Brendan Dassey was never linked to this crime by forensic evidence. Furthermore, Stephen Avery's defense counsel did not expect such an illogical, factually flawed finding by the circuit court. So touch DNA testing was not deemed necessary by defense counsel. The defense counsel. Moreover, defense counsel did not have the financial resources to do such testing when the circuit court issued its ruling on August 22, 2023. The touch DNA testing may confirm that the shirtless Bobby Dassey has left DNA in parts of the vehicle that implicate him in planting evidence and inflicting injuries on Teresa Hallbach. Specifically, if Bobby Dassey's touch DNA is in the five areas of the RAV4 where Stephen Avery's blood was found. This implicates Bobby in planting evidence, and if his touch DNA is found in the rear cargo area where Teresa Hallbach's blood was found, this implicates him in her assault and murder. Suspiciously, none of Stephen Avery's DNA was mixed with Teresa Hallbach's blood in the rear cargo area, despite the fact that the state claims Stephen Avery cut his finger while struggling with her. 
Stephen Avery has always maintained the cut on his finger occurred prior to Teresa Hallbach's disappearance. Additionally, touch DNA testing may also implicate unknown individuals or further strengthen the state's case against Stephen Avery. That's what I keep saying in these videos. If the state has nothing to hide, do the testing. Let Stephen Avery's team do the testing. It's not going to cost them anything. Stephen Avery's team is willing to pay for the testing. And if, if it comes back, it could come back saying Stephen Avery is 100% guilty. There's nobody else's DNA, touch DNA, sweat DNA, blood, whatever. There's nobody else's DNA in this RAF4 other than Stephen Avery. So we were right all along. Shut up. Go away. Blah. It's a quick way to end all of this if they would just allow the testing. Stephen Avery, yeah, I know they don't have to because they got a guilty verdict, but they're also complaining about all the time this is taking up and the time this is wasting. It's clogging up the court system. So do this one thing and it all goes away. Stephen Avery is not delaying his appeal. His brief is filed. It is the state who just asked for an extension until April 15th to file its brief. Stephen Avery filed a motion to stay in remand, as he did when a pro-SE appeal was pending in 2016, and he wished to do scientific testing. The state agreed to do that testing. Stephen Avery has no intention of withdrawing his appeal, nor foregoing his DNA motion with the circuit court. Stephen Avery requests that this court stay his current appeal and remand the case to the circuit court for consideration of his amended second motion for scientific testing before the circuit court. And that's the end of it. It does go on for like 30-something more pages, but it's just old filings that she attached to show what is going on. That is everything that was new from March 22nd, yesterday, 2024. It's crazy that they just if they have nothing to fear and they are truly bothered, they said this in the motion I read yesterday, I think it was, that they're tired of this, they shouldn't have to put up with it, it's wasting time, it's clogging up the court system. And they're right, this is clogging up the court system. If they firmly believe and they have nothing to fear of nobody else's DNA other than Stephen Avery's coming back, even though they got a guilty verdict, they can make this all go away and unclog the court system, as they put it, by just letting Kathleen Zellner and Stephen Avery's team do the DNA testing on the RAV4 and then just let Kathleen Zellner and Stephen Avery prove themselves in the state's mind that it's only Stephen Avery's DNA in this RAV4. Maybe they're fighting this because they don't actually have the RAV4. A lot of people are speculating that they don't actually have the RAV4. The RAV4 is gone, so this is why they're trying to put off this testing, because then they have to explain why the RAV4 is gone. We don't know that for sure. That is just a lot of speculation. But if the state would be like, sure, go ahead, do this test. We have nothing to fear, nothing to hide. It was Stephen Avery and Stephen Avery alone. And if there's nobody else's DNA in that vehicle, whoo, all of this goes away. The state can unclog the system. What do you think? Let me know. Leave some comments below. I hope you're having a good day, and I will see you again soon.